to talk about Grin's all-axle hub motor. Now this motor has been in development for a number of years, but we're finally in 2019 ready to do a mainstream release on this. This is a direct drive hub motor like you get with Crystalite, Nincontinent, Muxus, a lot of these other brands. But unlike those motors, it's actually pretty light. It weighs just under four kilograms, where a typical motor in this power class would be about six, six and a half kilos. So we've been able to carefully shave off two kilograms of weight without compromising the power output and torque capability of this hub motor. That's one thing that makes it stands out. What makes it even more unique is its universal all axle nature. So if you look closely at this motor, you'll see it actually has a 20 millimeter hollow spindle right through the middle. And that makes it compatible with almost every single bicycle fork that's on the market. So if you have a regular fork with quick release, we can just stick in these little quick release insert adapters, and then that will fit in with the quick release skewer. Newer bikes these days are really shifting away from slotted dropouts and are almost all moving to through axle standards, which makes for a stiffer front fork. So the current norm for mountain bikes and cross country bikes is a 15 millimeter diameter through axle. So if that's what you're running, you stick in two 15 millimeter inserts, and now this will be compatible with your QR15 by 100. This is a new 15 millimeter boost standard. It's also got a 15 millimeter spindle, but it's actually 10 millimeters wider. Well, we have a slightly longer version of this insert that adds that extra 10 millimeters of space. If you're running a downhill mountain bike with a really high travel suspension fork, it's probably got a 20 millimeter through axle. So this is already 20 millimeters in diameter, but those bigger suspension forks, they run 110 millimeters wide. So it's a longer width. So we have these end caps that add an extra five millimeters to each side and make it compatible with a 20 millimeter through axle. So one of the things that's really different about this motor design than a conventional front hub motor is that we're not relying on axle flats to transmit the torque. Instead, all of the torque of the motor is being transmitted through an integrated torque arm that bolts onto a large diameter spline pattern. That gives you enormous torque transmission capability without any risk of damaging or breaking the dropouts. And it also provides a wiggle-free torque arm. When you have a system with regenerative braking, you want to make sure that when you switch between forwards torque and backwards torque, that there isn't a bit of play in the system. And motors with flat axles will almost always have a little bit of play, and that wiggling can cause the nuts to loosen up and the wheel to fall off over time. So the one application that we didn't quite nail in the first release of our all-axle hub design was single-sided installations. And that's where you have something like a Tadpole tricycle or a quad vehicle, and you want to hold your motors from just the inside. You don't want to have a fork that goes to the other side of the wheel. And the problem with this motor design, even though this 20 millimeter hollow spindle could support a single sided shaft, the cable comes out of the motor on the opposite side of the disc rotor. So if you have a system with disc brakes, then when you install this on the vehicle, you have to somehow route this electrical wire through a hollow spindle to come out inside the trike vehicle. So we took the time this winter to rethink the entire axle engineering and see if we couldn't find a way of making the cable exit on the disc side. So here I have our single side version of the Grin motor. It can still accommodate the same quick release inserts, the same 15 millimeter through axle inserts. But if you look closely, you'll see that the cable is coming out on the disc side. And that means on any single side installation vehicle, you don't have to worry about the wires coming out through the back of the wheel. While we were doing that, we made a few other small changes too. So one thing about tricycles is that there's a lot more force on the ball bearings when you're cornering than you have on a normal bicycle wheel. Because we had to flatten the cable to fit inside the ID of the disc rotor, we were able to use a smaller inside diameter ball bearing, which enabled us to use a larger, beefier bearing than originally. We're hoping that increases the burliness and robustness of the bearing component of the system. We also made a migration to this L1019 waterproof motor cable. So this connector is locking and it has not only the three phase wires, but seven signal wires for all the hall sensors and the speedometer sensor and the temperature sensor all in one plug. This is gonna be the new connector standard that Grin uses in all the new motors that we release. And it results in a much cleaner and more rugged connectorization between the motor and the motor controller. So for those single-sided applications I've been alluding to, we machined a torque arm that goes on the disc side of the motor axle and includes the two mounting points for your disc caliper. What that does is lock the axle against spinning using the existing bolts that are holding the disc brake on and helps hold the motor in place at the same time. And now you can electrify a trike with two front hub motor wheels and get insane power and hill climbing capability. So 
this mode has been many years in the making and I'm so happy to finally be at a stage where it fulfills the all and all axle and it opens up the possibility of electrifying entire classes of vehicles that previously couldn't be electrified with hub motors. So I really can't wait to see the unique applications and projects that our customers are able to put this motor to use on. 